both private foundations and thinking about your campus resources. And uh, just to say that perhaps it's that I went into this uh, very naively, but I sort of assumed when I was a junior person that you found RFPs and you just applied for them. And if you got it, you got it, and if you didn't, you didn't. And I've since learned, at least on the private foundation side, that that's not really how it works. That, in fact, private foundations have personalities. They have um, sort of traditions, they have cultures, um, often because of whoever gave the money to start the foundation, but then they sort of develop the kinds of things that they do. And so it's really important to get to know your private foundations and what are the types of things that they're excited about, that they've been funding, um, that are important to them. And, and to appreciate that they also have their own language about those things. And so we may use a certain vocabulary as academics, but they want to see certain kinds of things. So for example, I work a lot with the James Irvine Foundation on the education side. They, they like something called linked learning, which is sort of bringing together, you could call it a lot of different things, but if you don't call it that in your application, you're not speaking their language. And so it's really important to get to know the program officers, which again, I didn't uh, appreciate as much when I was a junior person, and really build relationships with that program officer. And often, they actually come to campuses and visit campuses. And so figuring out whether or not those folks are coming to campus, and if they're not, finding places where you can meet them or setting up meetings to meet them. Often, foundations like to fund in their local area. Some are national, some are regional, um, some are family foundations, some are more kind of old family foundations, um, but sort of figuring out what the, what the landscape is and, and getting to know those people and introducing yourself, telling them about your work and seeing how, uh, what, your, what you do, whether it appeals to them, how they talk about it. Um, another good idea is to go talk to the people in your field and find out where they got funding and find out some information about the tendencies of certain foundations uh, so that you are coming into that conversation with some understanding of uh, the person to whom you're speaking, and what are, what are the types of things that they're, that they're interested in talking about. And, and that that process can take time, that it's not, you know, it, 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 it may take a while to sort of figure out uh, how to align what you're doing and to find the right place. And then sometimes they have smaller grants, and so the other thing is most program officers have uh, control over you know, I know at Russell Sage, I think they're called presidential grants, but the, you know, smaller amounts of money that they actually can, can just give, right? that they don't have to put through their board or whatever. And so to think about building up that relationship by applying for one of those smaller grants, working with a program officer, doing a pilot study, and then applying for the, for the big amount of money. Not, you know, usually foundations aren't giving 3.5 million, but you know, a few hundred thousand dollars when you're a junior faculty person is not a bad thing. So um, thinking about that process, but realizing if you're interested in getting funding, it often does take time. It takes sort of time, relationship building, and then over time it gets easier, kind of like everything um, in this profession. And so related to that, foundations really like to fund something somebody else already funded. There's just that, that yeah. kind of tendency that if you say you've already gotten money for this, somehow that's seen as a really good thing. And so most campuses have seed money, and it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but the fact that you've already applied for money, it, it helps you to refine your proposal. It helps you to sort of get some stuff off the ground, maybe get some findings so that then you can apply. So it may not seem, it's sort of the same thing, like how does small money kind of help you get big money? If you get $500, $2,000, $5,000 to do, you know, to, to refine your instrument or to do a small amount of work, that can actually help you then leverage more money. Or if you know two program officers and you tell them that, you know, well, MacArthur is actually interested in this, how about, you know, and you split the money, that they also like that too. It's always good to sort of, they, they like to kind of not be the only ones on the hook for, for whatever thing you're doing. Um, and the other thing that I think I never took <clears throat> uh, enough advantage of is really the, the, the grant support resources on campus. I think, especially when you first started a place, you're sort of in your little bubble of your department or your school, and often there, there's grant writing support on campus that, that you can take advantage of. There are other people who've applied to that foundation, that's a big one, if they can get, let you see what their proposals look like. Um, and provide you help with that, and then also making sure that you talk to somebody fairly early in the process about the budget, and what are things that are appropriate to fund. Um, every, org every institution has different rules about what they will fund, what they won't fund, how much overhead they'll fund, Th those kinds of nuts and bolts things that it's really important. I think, I think Brian in our email talking about like, know what the rules are and follow the rules. It may sound simple, but the rules are different for every, en every funding entity, and you really have to 
make sure that you understand, and, and the rules are different for every institution, right? What, what is okay for your institution may not be okay for the funder, what is okay for the funder may not be okay for your institution, and finding out, you know, I live in the University of California, which is probably one of the most Byzantine bureaucracies that exists on the planet, um, and, and we have a lot of rules. <laughs> it has taken me 14 years, and I still don't know all of the rules, and so finding help for that process is really important to make sure that you're not wasting your time, that you're not putting forth a proposal that has a component that just won't fly with the people that you're applying to, and making sure that you have a greater chance of success in the long run. <laughs>